Well, as you all know, I am nothing if not a sunny, cheerful optimist. I prefer to believe that we live in a world of rainbows and gumdrops. That's just how I like to see the world. And that's why when I encounter abject lunacy and absurdity, I still sometimes have a hard time believing believing it, you know, believing that it's true. There, there's a part of me that clings to the hope, the desperate, dying hope that the dumbest, most incorrigibly stupid things are really just a joke, a, a dark kind of satire. And yet those hopes are almost always, in the end, dashed. And that brings us to the events of yesterday afternoon. But before we get there, we got to back up a little bit to the day, the day before yesterday when the Podcast Movement Conference kicked off in Dallas. This is a trade expo for podcasters organized and run by a group called Podcast Movement. Uh, podcasters from around the country, they come together and they, they talk about podcasting. Now, frankly, as a podcaster myself, the event sounds like a nightmare. Like the last thing I'd ever want to do is be around a bunch of other podcasters talking about podcasting. But that's just me. You know, the Daily Wire had a more positive attitude about it. And so the company sent, set up a, a booth on the convention floor. To be clear, we paid to set up a booth. The money was accepted by this group podcast movement. And uh, the booth was set up and everything seemed to be fine until tragedy struck. Ben Shapiro showed up at the conference. Now, he wasn't speaking there. He wasn't presenting anything. He just kind of showed up and uh, said hello to people, took some pictures with fans, and then he left. As far as I know, he didn't lash out violently at any point. He didn't go berserk and, and start murdering podcasters left and right. And even if he did, you know, there are so many podcasters in the world that honestly, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We have enough to spare. But that's not what happened. He also did not, despite reports to the contrary, uh, bite the head off of a kitten while uttering demonic inc incantations. He didn't even drink blood or breathe fire. He did none of those things, so far as I'm aware. And yet, Podcast Movement, the next day, issued this tweet, which, when I saw it for the first time, I could only stare at it blankly for several minutes, trying to convince myself that it's supposed to be satirical. But, alas, it is not. They tweeted, Hi, folks. We owe you an apology before, before sessions kick off for the day. Yesterday afternoon, Ben Shapiro briefly visited the PM22 Expo area near the Daily Wire booth. Though he was not registered or expected, we take full responsibility for the harm done by his presence. There's no way around it. We agreed to sell the Daily Wire a first-time booth based on the company's large presence in podcasting. The weight of that decision is now painfully clear. Shapiro is a co-founder. A drop-in, however unlikely, should have been considered a possibility. Oh, but they aren't done yet. It continues. Those of you who called this unacceptable are right. In nine wonderful years growing and celebrating this medium, PM has made mistakes. The pain caused by this one will always stick with us. We promise that sponsors will be more carefully considered moving forward. Just to clarify, no TW, TDW representatives were scheduled to appear on panels, and Shapiro remained in the common space and did not have a badge. If you have questions, we're here to talk. Thank you for reading, and we hope you continue to join us from here on out. Now, in fairness, I will admit that Ben's presence in the office causes uh, me pain and trauma as well, but that's only because he stole my giant stuffed walrus. If any of the people at the podcast conference even have giant stuffed walruses, theirs were home safe and not threatened by Ben Shapiro at all. So what was their complaint? Well, a short time after these tweets from uh, the podcast movement went out, uh, the Daily Wire released video from Ben's brief time at the conference. So you can watch for yourself and decide whether this reaction from the people there was warranted. So here's the footage. And of course, you know, it goes without saying, viewer discretion is advised. Here it is. Yesterday afternoon, Ben Shapiro briefly visited the PM22 Expo. Though he was not registered or expected, we take full responsibility for the harm done by his presence. So do I get to get a picture? God bless you. Hey, thank you. We agreed to sell the Daily Wire a first-time booth based on the company's large presence in podcasting. The weight of that decision is now painfully clear. During event planning, the dangerous nature of the company's messaging was overlooked. Those of you who called this unacceptable are right. Podcast movement has made mistakes. The pain caused by this one will always stick with us. 
Yeah, thanks for everything you do. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm excited about it. That's great. Thank you so much for coming. This is your work support. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. My God, he's a monster. Those people certainly look like they were fearing for their lives because that's what you do when you're deathly afraid of somebody. You ask for a selfie. Um, may, may seem to be sort of an unorthodox strategy, but it turned out to be an effective defense mechanism. Perhaps it's a tactic you could try the next time you're being chased through the woods by an axe murderer. You can stop them from killing you by just asking them to pose for a picture. Now, in any event, uh, clearly not everybody was happy to see Ben there. Uh, one podcaster who goes by the handle Star Planes on Twitter took a picture of Ben from a safe distance and tweeted it with the caption, Hey, podcast movement, what the F? Continuing, it says, As a trans, a queer person, as someone with a uterus, this does not make me feel welcome. This does not make me feel safe. A short time later, Star Planes provided this update. Just confirm with the pod move team that they did not know Shapiro was attending. In fact, they were told he was not. Him showing up was the first they knew about it. Does that make everything okay? No. Am I much happier knowing he was not an invited guest? Absolutely. Now, you might be asking yourself, who gives a damn what Star Plains thinks? Why is she special? Was Ben Shapiro supposed to get special clearance from her specifically before simply existing within a 100-foot radius of her? Well, yes, that's exactly what was supposed to happen, apparently. And that's why, due to this complaint from Star Plains, and maybe a few other complaints, though that's the only one I've actually seen, the organization issued what may go down in history as the most pathetic apology of all time. It certainly wins the title for this month, at least. I think we can agree on that. Now, what makes this all the more pathetic and embarrassing is that Ben Shapiro is one of the very top podcasters in the business. The Daily Wire as a company is one of the top podcast publishers. According to the latest ranking from PodTrack, we're the sixth largest publisher in the country with 72 million downloads just last month, last month alone, which means we beat companies like Disney and Fox and Paramount and Cumulus. In fact, our performance is even more impressive than that as, as uh, PodTrack counts us as having 12 active shows. iHeartRadio, which is the number one publisher, has 678 active shows. Wondery at number two has 202. NPR at three has 46. So we come in at number six with only 12, and less than half of those 12 are daily shows. So pound for pound, in terms of the average number of downloads per show, we actually should be number two right behind the New York Times. The point here is that if you're a podcaster attending a podcasting convention with podcasting talks and workshops, you should want us there. You should be coming up to us for podcasting classes. You should be asking us to teach our secrets. If you see Ben Shapiro walking around, you should be coming to him for advice, not running away in fear with your hands over your ears. Star Plains, whose real name apparently is Tal Manier, uh, is in the podcasting business, and yet nobody's ever heard of this person. She's had no success. Her career has been pitiful, no offense. But she didn't go to Ben Shapiro and say, hi, I work in the same business as you, but I have no idea how to be successful at it. You are much, much better at this and approximately 5 million times more successful. Please teach me your ways. Now, if you want to be successful, that's what you do when you're around people who are more successful than you in the same field. Instead, she stood off at a distance, tweeting angrily and demanding that this man who could teach her so much be escorted off the premises. And, and maybe as I say this, I'm kind of explaining part of the problem. There is no doubt a lot of jealousy at work here. The Daily Wire is conservative, but that alone is not our, our sin, right? Our sin is that we are conservative and wildly successful. That's why they can't stand us. In fact, they're, they're more than happy to have conservatives who are in these same spaces but are not successful. That's good. But to be successful in their space and to be more successful than them, that's, that's just not, that's unthinkable. And yet, as ridiculous as all this is, we cannot fail to notice the more serious implications. So it's bad enough when a conservative is judged dangerous or harmful for the opinions that he's expressing. It's bad enough when um, our ideas are treated like chemical weapons. What happened yesterday represents an escalation beyond all of that. It's not simply Ben's opinions that are dangerous now. It is his presence. His existence in physical space is harmful and painful. Now, I don't think I need to spell out 
why this is, you know, why this is a problem. When it's determined that a conservative's mere presence can cause harm, the stage has been set for some rather dark and terrible things. And if I do need to spell it out, then I will say that labeling the physical presence of a group of people harmful is pre-genocide talk. It is quite literally a justification for rounding people up and throwing them in prisons or mass graves. And if it was just some group of fragile podcasters talking this way, it'd be nothing to worry about. But the problem is that this is increasingly the language adopted by all of the most powerful institutions in America. That those with wrong ideas are, are not just wrong. Uh, they're dangerous. They're terrorists. And they have to be dealt with accordingly. You know, we've been following the dramatic story of Walrus Gate. And I told you yesterday that this uh, scandal goes right to the top. Um, and Ben Shapiro's already getting a lot of heat. And uh, I don't mean to add to it, but, but I am going to add to it because his producer sent me this. This is a totally real, I guess he was, he was asked about at some point about the, the giant walrus. And, and um, this is a totally real hot mic moment that was sent to me. I can't tell you who, who, I can't tell you who my source is, but here it is. Hey Ben, do you know where Matt's walrus is? No. He's getting pretty upset about it. Tell him to get the f back to work. That hurts. I, I do. I understand. I actually understand. I take back everything I said at the beginning of the show. The whole monologue. I retract it. I totally understand how the people at the podcast convention felt. It's painful. I know you're uh, craving some more Matt Walsh Show content. Well, I have some great news for you. If you head over to dailywire.com and subscribe now, you can watch or listen to my full show. You can also listen to my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'll see you there.